What's up, guys? We're back at the GSL Code S, and it's time for our final best of three. That's right. Hero got out in first place. No regret, unfortunately. Going home with a few regrets, perhaps. Not able to pull off his strategies. Not able to yeah. get a half win tonight. But, uh, you know, we'll see if he can maybe get in again in the future. If he's done it once, he can do it again for sure. We now go to Trap versus Dark. These two players had a fantastic series. Trap surprisingly coming out on top. I think at any point in time in the last two, three years, we would always assume that Dark would beat Trap. But Trap is looking very solid in his PVZ. He knows how to get all the way to the end of the race um, in great form. Yes, he's he's showing that he really knows how to play some of the best late game PVZ we've ever seen against easily one of the best players of all time, Dark. Somebody who's scariest mm. in the longer parts of the game. He is, but uh, you know, Dark definitely did make some mistakes uh, in the in the previous series. Um, you know, no, notably on New Kirk Precinct, he did do that kind of like that three queen drop with Roach Ravager, kind of all in attack, kind and, of unnecessary, I thought. Yeah, like I think if he goes longer games three times in a row, he should be able to do it. But that last map is Abyssal. That's so true. That's, that's a map that Protosses generally do like against her. Let's go into game number one in our final best of three, Trap versus Dark. Right. In the bottom right, in the blue, he is... Jin Air Green Wings. Trap. In the bottom left, in the red, our Zerk player, he is. Dark. Dark, very hungry to move on. He's had a rough year he has. so far. Yeah, like, I mean, this is a guy that you're kind of expecting to be possibly winning any tournament he goes into, and... He almost needs to do that at this point. He just he has not collected that many WCS points. He hasn't had any truly great performances this year. Whereas the last couple of years, he really kind of has been near the top of so many things. So hopefully we can see him do well here. But of course, Trap, one of these underestimated Protosses, kind of like patience in that regard. To be honest, I really underestimated Trap tonight. I didn't think he was going to do uh, as well as he's done. Yeah. Uh, he did get completely wrecked by Hero, but I think there's really no shame in that in PvP. Hero is looking so scary. We're really not clear on how far Hero is going to get in this GSL. He might go all the way to the finals. Yeah, he can, he could win this GSL. Like, it, Hero is just serious on such a high level right now. Uh, he is putting out some of the highest quality games I have ever seen. Just about every time I turn on the... Uh, Streams. The, the telly. Yeah, the telly. <laughs> I don't know. It's like not really a television. My computer's always on, so <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I don't really turn anything on. I just, you know. Well, let's see what Traps got in store. Uh, one thing we have to factor in is that Dark is a player who ad uh, very much so adapts. It mm -hmm. seems like the more he plays against somebody, the better he tends to do. Yeah. And I think Dark has got a lot of great data on how Trap approaches the late game. Does Dark try to go into late game again? I mean, it seems like Trap really knew from A to Z how to get there. Yeah. Maybe he tries to go for something more aggressive, but then again, we have to go back to game number two in the previous series with these uh, two players where Trap shut him down. Yeah, he's got a... Uh, Trap has, like, a good map into... That was on this map, nice by the way, games. wasn't it? Yeah, he shut down yeah. the Roach Ravager queen right. thing here. I don't think we'll see that again from Dark. That would be kind of surprising to me. I, I just don't care for that in general in a lot it of ways. It seemed like against Trap, that's something you just should never do. He was well, completely fine with whatever Zerg had to throw yeah. at him. And he had the most standard opener. Like, literally Oracle into charge. It's like, yeah. well, I mean, that's just kind of what Protoss does. Right. You know, that's how you get into a macro game. So if you're losing to the most common build that you will run into, it's maybe not the, the, the best choice or place to put in one of these all-ins. So Oracle is on the way. Uh, everything pretty standard here from both sides. So the probe taken out. And we see the Oracle coming here. So, so far, everything seems to be pretty par for the course in a standard mm -hmm. uh, PVZ. 
season. And Oracle's on the way. By the way, I feel like Trap has really improved a lot this season. He definitely went to the lab with a lot of his ideas and uh, has brought out some more impressive PvZ play we've seen. Yeah. A lot of times the problem for Protoss' versus Zerg right now in this current iteration of StarCraft is the Zergs tend to kill him right when we're going in between mid-game and late-game. Mm. Sometimes right in the mid-game as well. Um, well, he seems pretty solid against all that stuff, right? Like the one game yeah. he did lose was kind of getting some units out of position against a Dark who never sacrificed anything. Uh, so that's something, again, that's really easy for Trap to fix if he gets back into a position like that. But the way that Dark has played, he can definitely kind of tidy everything up going forward. Now, this is a great scout. The fact that he sees that Twilight is going up before a third base, very important info. He gets that one Adept, runs away, not losing too many Lings either. A lot of times we see Zergs come out there and they do get some Adepts, but for how many Lings they trade, it's sort of so-so. Yeah. The Adepts are somewhat expendable early on. If you, as long as you get your third base up, you're basically fine. Yeah, like the Adepts are here. Like They're kind of like Lings for the damage. Protoss. Yeah, they force Lings out. You might get some drones. You kind of like, you get additional scouting done every now and then you'll get a queen or something but like these initial like four or five adept pushouts they don't really do that much other than force units you know what i think he hit these oh okay he's not going to do it dark almost hit the lings in such a way at the third base that uh, mm -hmm. it's possible that trap thought that dark didn't didn't call his bluff yeah <laughs> and he would have uh, warped that in and then lost that but instead uh he uh, tra traps and playing a very conservative game i think at this point in time with trap uh, after that last series these guys had, because this, of course, is the rematch, is that Trap may be thinking, wait a minute, I actually can beat Dark in a normal game. I'm just not going to take any risks here. Yeah. Because I don't have to. Well, it, you know, it, that could be, too. Like, Dark could have, like, a, a weird mindset. And the way that he's been playing, he's been dropping a Roach Warren at the drop of a hat, which... There was definitely a time where I would praise him for doing this, right? Back when people would just die to Adepts. It's yeah. like, wow, you didn't make a Roach Warren. People die to Adepts. But right now, people don't really die to Adepts as much. Like, occasionally you see an Adept all-in win, but some of these kind of Adept pressure type plays haven't been pulling that off. So is is he needlessly playing too defensively against Trap? That's a good question. Mm. Uh, we have the War Prism coming along now. Uh, note a deviation. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, Artosis, but in, in the previous series these guys played earlier today, he went for a, a dark... Shrine, right? Not a Temple Archives when he was doing this build. Uh, actually, this right? is a slightly different build. Like he went for the quick Twilight, but it got scouted. So I think he just changed. Oh, I'm roots. sorry. That that that's what I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good call. Good call. So yeah, this is like uh, just it's turning into a very standard PVZ. Whereas I think he could have gone Glaives with it, but he, he decided not to here. Just well, getting into charges, in knows, Temple Archives. You, you might as well try to mix it up a little bit. So Storm is coming down now. Mm -hmm. This Ling is going to spot the Warp Prism that's coming forward here. He's just going to pick it off. Uh, the Prism is kind of just to keep some units back, maybe get a little tiny bit of damage done, but... This basically keeps the Zerg honest. Yeah, exactly. And keeps them somewhat under control. Yeah, Whoa. It's, it's like, okay, keep some Hydras in your main. That's going to be less units attacking Trap later on as well. That Psystorm needs a little bit more time to finish. You notice that Baneling Speed as well as the Hydralis upgrade will both finish before the Storm. So. Oh, wow. He actually supply blocked Dark there. How funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, he has seven Overlords on the way. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's quite a few. Well, we've seen some style. I was about to say that. <laughs> yeah. Remember when Stefano, there was this really interesting thing he would do when he's playing, where if you watch closely, he would be at like 120 supply and then suddenly make all of his overlords at once for yeah. the rest of the yeah. game. It was pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, definitely not optimal, but I don't think definitely the way worked you want to time. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, right now we see Dark, he's getting those seven overlords, so he's going to have a big explosion. Went from being supply blocked to having 174 total supply <laughs> open. Yeah. And he's going to just macro up pretty heavily from here. He's getting that plus two melee, which is definitely very useful. Uh, getting a couple drop lords as well. So if he can hit some probes with that, it gives him a huge advantage. Okay, this is really nice here for Trap. Mm -hmm. He's going to uh, make a campfire, cook some marshmallows, <laughs> and wait for those to, uh, to finish up. Nothing kind of, kind feels of quite as good as surrounding Ooh. units that are in a stasis Oh, order. yeah. It's like quite the, rewarding. The priest around is like, you are not getting out of here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I think those units just unthawed or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, Stasis what we're off. Looks like four get away anyways. Yeah. Still, uh, you know, Stasis wards are out. It looks like Dark is going to tech up a little bit more here with the Infestation Pit on the way. Still making Hydras, Inlings, and Banes. 
Which is completely fine as well, right? Like, you can be on four base economy with plenty of drones. Like, he almost has 80 drones here at 76. And just continually make this unit set. Because, like we were talking about a lot on the Ascension game that these guys previously played, it's very hard to move out if the Zerg has not wasted units. Ooh. Like, if he's in an arc, then you're just going to have a very tough oh, time. I'm sorry, he pulled the trigger. He's actually going to go... I, didn't, I don't know why he's doing this. That was so weird. Okay. He lost the War Prism and therefore lost the pin that was keeping the Zerg completely mm. contained. Pro uh, Zerg now moving out. I thought he was just going to fly to the corner. Uh, here it is, guys. Ooh. Those signature three Overlords. There's very little anti-air here, so yeah. picking off those Overlords is not easy at all. You can't just right-click that oh with Oh, my God. If he gets on top of the Templars, and the Templars can't really respond. Yeah. If only drop cost of mana or Tosis. <laughs> So <laughs> just, that's right. Just give a mana yeah. bar to Overlords. Yeah, that's that's how you stop this. They don't have a spell. This wizard like, paying attention, guys. I solved it. Yeah. Uh, Let feedback kill everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. Uh, uh, actually, actually, honestly, that didn't. The drops didn't do the damage they were supposed to do. No. But I think the Zerk can still kill him anyways. He might be able to. This is a huge amount of Ling Bane Hydra, and he can bring everything because he knows the Prism is dead. Oh, wow. That Stasis Sword really saving him there quite a bit. A couple of High Templars end well, up falling right there, though. Uh, he still has a few more Storms, but Dark is kind of slowly milking away all the mana from the Templars. Yeah. So, I mean, eventually the Zerg is going to come in for a bust. By the way, these units are going to uh, unstasis and still be able to do a lot of damage. So, the Stasis is buying time, but it's mm. not allowing this game to go on further. And I think this is the end of game number one. As these Hydras come in here and just do way too much damage. Yeah, it's very wow. hard to hold on against things like this. Super well done by Dark, though. Like, he just waited this game for there to be some sort of mistake out of trap. And then just jumps on him because of it. So, I think that, yeah, that's going to be it. That's GG. Dark, it yeah. Dark made the right adjustments. And that means he has a 1-0 lead. Trap's going to have to pull it together. Dark has identified how to play a more standard game and come out against a player like Trap, somebody who's able to win one best of three, but not might not be able to win two yeah. against the same Zerk player, a player of the caliber of Dark. Yeah, th this was like very patient and good play on both sides for quite a while, and then Trap was, I feel like Trap looked at that and just said, nothing's happening, I, I, I needed to do something, like I'm still just making these units. But as soon as that prison went down, man, the trigger was pulled and Dark was across that map. I'm getting worried for Trap. I don't know if Trap can try to pull a fast one on Dark. I think Trap has to try to play a more standard game, but Dark is somebody who keeps adapting, who keeps downloading Trap's playstyle. Yeah. It's, uh, this is definitely looking very Dark favored, but if Trap can take him down on Ascension Ire, uh, this Reef is going to be a pretty good map for him. We saw he's very good with Colossus play very there. Very true, but he has to win this game. What's yeah. he going to do? I think Dark is going to take a very measured approach. Just get ahead, keep that momentum going. Yeah. Our game number two is loaded. Let's do this. Trap versus Dark. Right. In the upper left, he is Jin Air Green Wings. Trap. In the bottom right, in the red, getting second at BlizzCon. Dark. All right. Dark winning the last time they played on this map. We'll see if Trap has a new build for this game. Previously, he went for charge harassment into some Archons and a third base and everything. Went into a nice macro game. Probe now coming out. I, I, I do worry for for Trap. If if Trap can't um, cripple Dark at all, and by the way, I think Dark is actually the hardest Zerg to cripple. Um, I don't know how he's going to handle the late game. Let's go back over game number one. Actually, um, one thing that Trap did do wrong is he lost that warp prism. Yeah, he lost that warp prism, yeah. and that was right after the attack happened. And, I, I'm a little bit confused by it as well. I, it might have been the trap saw that Dark was taking two more bases and kind of freaked out. 
Yeah. That oh shit. Yeah. Just sent, sent that warp prism in. He had but that so was many of, drones and such a big army. He's just like, yeah. God, I got to do something. And I think that he he needed to be a little bit more patient and just stay back because, yeah. um, I mean, after that, Dark took every single unit he had, hit, hit whatever mm -hmm. button he's got that <laughs> key to, and, and, and went for it. And and. Uh, also, it, it can be very tricky when they just keep making Ling Bane Hydra with yeah. a high drone count, uh, especially on Newkirk because it is so wide open. Uh, they get a huge arc on you and just kind of roll in. You have to actually make a bunch of buildings out there as well. If you really want to hold this, uh, doing things like putting extra pylons, extra cannons, even some gateways in there possibly, like anything in the way will make it hard for Ling Bane to be as cost efficient against you. Yeah, the Hydras can pick off of that, but you're buying yourself time there. Getting extra mana, getting extra warp ins, things like that. I wonder. Um, you know, one of the big problems that Protoss have faced, you know, with the Hydra Bane, and it's really important to take note of, and this is gonna sound a little bit weird, but stay with me as I say this. Okay. Um, the Protoss want the fight to last for longer. They have more tools there if the fight can kind of be drug out. Yeah. Yeah. They get stasis is up. They get to pick little fights here and there. I was ready to leave they you, get... but I stayed with you, and I'm glad for it. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> um, but, you know, the, the problem with Hydra Bane is damage is dealt so fast that Protoss, in some cases, it's not always true, but in some cases, they aren't they aren't able to use their abilities. Mm. I mean, the, the fight lasts sometimes like Remember four seconds. Remember the Hush games? He, like, yeah. he, lost the, he lost out of his group because High Templars were getting hit by Banelings. Yeah. It and just... it's like, oh! Well, you lose now. That's it. Like, your High Templars die to Banelings, the game is over. It's really interesting because when you look at Protoss, they have all these abilities they got to activate, like Guardian Shield, Force Field, uh, Psionic Storm, um, and, and many more feedback sometime, yeah. sometimes. And, and, and it's like, how do you prioritize each of these moves? Especially when Banelings come in. You have to look at the situation, and you have maybe two seconds, two and a half seconds to respond. And you have to respond perfectly or the game ends. And Zerbs are really utilizing that with this, this composition. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's funny because it started out in um, this expansion of the game, Legacy of the Void, that the Protoss beat up the Zergs so badly they never got to get the ball rolling. But mm -hmm. the Zergs adapted and have managed to hold everything off, and the tables have turned now for Protoss. It seems. Yes, certainly uh, you are right about that. And you know these these attacks and how you say like it, they want the battle to last longer. This is why you really need a prism on the map as well, uh, because if they are attacking you, you warp in units over at their side and start doing damage because banelings don't stay in the battle like if you can be counter-attacking while they're doing it and then just whittle down the banelings once the banelings are gone hydra bane is now just hydra and it's not anywhere near as yeah, scary and, and, and there is a problem that a hydra bane has as well is, is if you like lose all the banelings the hydras usually cannot run away mm. and the hydras are of course very expensive so there's that as well uh, it seems like a lot of Protoss players want to get to the point where they have enough Colossi set up. They can actually combat that, but it takes a long time to get that far. Yeah, and it matters what map you're on as well. Like, we're less likely to see Colossi on this map. You really kind of need Colossi uh, with force fields. So if it's wide open areas you're going to be fighting with, the Colossi aren't going to do as well. You're gonna, they're going to get surface area on you. They can sacrifice enough Banes to, yeah. to wreck your Colossi. But somewhere like Abyssal, for instance, if Trap can win this game, get into game three on Abyssal, that's suddenly somewhere where you don't need many force fields to protect your Colossi. Okay, that Warp Prism's out. I am curious to see if, once again, Dark's going to have those three Overlords with Drop and the Banelings in him. Because it seems to be, apparently, according to him, exactly what you're supposed to do. Well, he's got one Overlord with Banelings in him right now. Oh, oh wow, my god, a... those are sentries? Yeah, oh, that was shocking. That was really bad. Get him! Uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh, no! Oh my god, he only got two? He's gonna get a few more, I think. No, look at that. Or maybe. Or maybe not. Or maybe he's not, Artosis. <laughs> Man, a lot oh. of those probes very red. Wow, that was a brave, brave little split right there. Okay, well. Could have played Yaki Sacks to that one. Yeah. Not too much damage. Didn't expect the overload to chase it all the way over there. Yeah. Uh, okay, he's gonna take out these Adepts, Trap. You know, he, uh, as. as Little damage as that Baneling drop did. Uh, let's remember that that uh, Dark killed those two sentries. Oh, he's just gonna try to go for it. Hope your screen's not here, bro. <laughs> yep. Oh, but it was. Only two kills again. Okay. I mean, you're only losing two two probes that you don't really care. Seems like Dar uh, Excuse me. Trap wants to move out on the map. Is this a wise decision? Hmm. 
Kind well, of how many Banelings are out there? Baneling speed is done, and he actually has two Drop Lords, so like, there's not enough anti-air here to pick those off, and Trap smartly turns around. He is not going to break through there. Okay. What exactly uh, is... Oh, my God. We're going back to 2010. Oh, jeez. That's actually what's going to happen here. You know what? Didn't it make Ravagers? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that's fine. Watch this. Oh, look at that. He picks them up into the... Uh, oh, wow. Prism. Very smart moves. He's, he's keeping this going, man. He has another warp in coming. Mm. I'm sorry. Is, what, what is The queen is not hitting the warp prism, right? Is it? We actually haven't clicked I on the HP. Oh, I, he picks up the queens and brings them in. I like that, too. Okay, well, he deals with it. That was, like, what? a pretty good way to deal with it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Well, that's that's game. I mean, maybe not, but probably. Oh, he killed 14 drones during all this, but he lost his army. Okay, he's now, got three sentries as his army right now. Yeah, um... Well, look, I, maybe I shouldn't have said that scam, but I mean, realistically, that's so hard to come back from. He shut down everything. Yeah, especially with uh, Bane Hydra going to be on the way. Like, he doesn't have splash damage yet. That's going to be an issue. You have to have, like, Psy Storm or something, or at least a lot of sentries. He's got three right now. He's, like, made three stalkers. Okay, he's going blink, so I think that this is probably the best idea is for him to just go like lots of lots of sentries, lots of stalkers, and just be like, okay, this is the quickest way to get a defense out. Trying to get into Psy Storm right now, I don't know if that's going to work. Problem is, is that losing so much of those key units, and I guess I guess getting fourteen drones is pretty big, but I think that the fact that he look had that main army not been picked off so easily and so cost effectively, I would say that that was somewhat of a cool trade. But I don't, I just don't know now. Look at this. Let's see if he pulls him. It worked! Yeah. You know what's funny is you can't fake a Thor drop because you can see the Thor hanging off. Shouldn't you see a Baneling hanging off of each tendril so you know? The, shouldn't Terran get hallucinate so they could pick up a Thor, fake Thor? <laughs> <laughs> yes, clearly. This is why they should make me in charge of the balance stuff here. Like, I'll make this game really oh, good. Oh, not again. With oh, four man. zealots and 600 minerals of stuff. Dude, that's too bad. Okay, well, he's getting the Colossi out now. I'm just worried that there's just going to be a couple Colossi and nothing else, and it doesn't matter uh, if Trap got the units he wanted to because he threw everything, uh, everything else away. And Zerg's at that point where, even though it looks like Zerg's a little bit ahead, suddenly Zerg ramps up and maxes out in a little mm. bit. So, And he's going for Hive against Colossus Tech, and the Colossus are not even out yet. Ooh. Okay, well, he turns around Ooh, right there. Ooh, indeed, Artosis. Ooh. But uh, Vipers are going to be a quite a nice counter to this. There's no Templar Archives yeah. yet. I think it's straightforward here for the Zerg. Yeah, if he makes, like, a couple Vipers, he just yanks in Colossi and then, well... Man, it's going to be six bases. Six bases versus three. It's twice as many. Yeah. Trap has half as many. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the problem is is that Dark doesn't even have to do anything right away. He's just going to have so much of the map secured. Mm. Thermal Lance and is it's, done. It's a big map, and it's pretty wide open in a lot of areas. So, like, the Colossus tech, while well, this made sure that he wasn't going to die to to Bane Hydra, it, you know, it does this transition that well? I, I Trap has to do an all-in from here, right? Just, like, plus two Blink Colossus all-in. That's There's no other option. It's not like he can just tech up, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Well, let's see. Well, I don't know. Where, where can he attack from here? The area he's walking through, that looks like a good yeah. place that he could stay there. He just stays in the middle of the map and hopes he attacks him there. <laughs> That's my strategy. That's <laughs> just stand there Come and get me. To, just makes a force field wall. Like, yeah. mainly just keep dying against yeah. it. But you see the whole map is this mined is, out. This <laughs> is how I beat the computer on hard mode. Yeah. Um, oh, man. Doesn't even have an me. observer. Ah. Oh, dude, this is not working that well. <laughs> it, if he maxes out, though, right? Like, if you're maxed out with this, this tech, you could do it. Okay. Where are the Vipers? Okay, there are two Vipers. Oh, he's in trouble, man. Vipers. Maybe with the Prism, you can, like, hot pick him up, you know? Yeah, maybe. Like, scoop well, him back on, up. hold on, hold on. I actually think Dark backed up too much. There's nothing here. Whoa, okay. Eh, not bad. Yeah, that was that was definitely worth those force fields. But these Vipers scare me, man. Oh! Some harpoons right into the... <laughs> well, that... Actually, that a lot of Banes split yeah. on the uh, 
The Colossus. It, it definitely ate a lot of Banes, and now he can get another Hatchery. You said it was six bases against three, but what about four? <laughs> Look at this. He's going to get that one, too. <laughs> he just pulls the prism in, and he's like, no! <laughs> Worst of all worlds. I got to say, I didn't think Trap was going to be able to come in there. I guess Dark's really proceeding with caution here. Yeah. If I'm Trap, I think you go back home now and expand. I think I start, like... I, I think I keep poking, to be honest. Uh, and Really? There's some tricks you can do, too, right? Like, if he attacks in, you can utilize force fields so Banelings don't do anything. You can trap Banelings in there. Hold maybe up. aggressively blink on top of them so they explode on Stalkers inefficiently. Well, look at this. I mean, this eh, he's making some good moves. No more Colossi, but... Pretty wide berth here, though. Ooh. I don't know. There's so many Banelings are coming in here and connecting. Well, you know what, man? Maybe I was Ooh, wrong. Ooh, the Blinding Cloud, though, really good. Okay. Force fields, he Traps can't have any left. It. He has Adrenal Upgrade done for Zerglings, by the way, and so these things are going to start. A lot more coming out here. They're the drones are through. pulled. <laughs> um, all right, the Lynx coming forward here. It's just Stalkers. This is not a favorable engage for these Stalkers. Eventually, the Hydras should be able to get to where the Warp Prism is and take it out. Well, Adept's being warped in. As the Banelings go away, the Adept's definitely can come out to play. Mm, yeah. Well, <laughs> he's making two Colossus now at home. That is oh, not a good man. sign. Now, does Trap keep playing the game? He may try to tap out here. I think he taps out. He's been completely annihilated. If your idea is to make two Colossus GG. against someone who already has Vipers, it's like, wow. Yeah. Nicely done. Trap, deservedly so, moves on to the round of 16. Dark. Sorry, Dark. 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 Sorry, man. What am I doing? Wow. Dark moves on uh, to the round of 16. Uh, you were testing me. It's fine. That's right. I passed the you test. Gotta make sure you're on point at all times, Artosis. So Dark and Hero moving forward uh, as expected. Yeah, but but you know what? The games are great today. Yeah. Uh, I do feel for no regret. Send that guy some love. He got into the GSL code as. It's a big accomplishment, no doubt about that. Certainly. But uh, and Trap, you know what? He went two and three against Dark overall tonight, and zero oh and two against Hero. It, not so bad. No, not at all. Unfortunately, he's out in this round, but this was a pretty tough group. Very volatile group. A lot of crazy things could have gone down and, and did. Congratulations to Dark. We are going to have an interview with him and see what his thoughts are. Keep in mind, he still wants to get to BlizzCon. He is hungry. Let's see if he manages to do it. Where's this interview, Artosis? What are we doing? I don't know. Promise me, guys. Okay, here we go. 네, 두 번째 진출자 박명호 선수 바로 만나보겠습니다. 축하드립니다. Here he says our second player to advance is Dark. 네, Congratulations. He says thank you. 네, 두 번째 진출자입니다. 먼저 소감부터 들어볼게요. First of all, how do you feel, Dark? 사실 승자조 가서 준호 형이랑 좀 well, 혈투를 벌인 뒤에 when I had the winners 싶은데, match or the first match against the hero, <laughs> I want to have really good. Uh, right, excuse me, he had that match against Trap. I'm getting this all wrong, guys. I'm going to mess at the end 됐습니다. of the show. 최종전 와서는 이첫 번째 경기가 계속해서 Anyways, uh, 눈치를 보면서 Dark, 하는 경기였다면 최종전에서는 초반부터 부유하기 시작하는 series. 과감함도 있었고 또 원하는 타이밍이 really 또 하실 수가 있게 됐는데 그첫 번째 패배에서 얻었던 그 보완한 점은 뭐였나요? 어 일단 상대 선수분이 네. 제 스타일을 되게 잘 알고 계시더라고요. 아. 방송에서 보여준 덕도 없는데 좀 네. 데뷔를 미리미리 하고 계시더라고요. 그래서 아. 어, 그냥 준비형대로 말고 대로 really 하거나 좀 match. 스타일 맞춤을 하자라는 생각으로 좀 네. 조성훈 선수의 스타일 맞춤을 했던 게 trap. 승리하게 된 요인인 것 같아요. 이 세트는 하시면서도 긴장감이 크지 않으셨어요? 아, 이 세트요? 네. 이 세트 그 저가 가장 화나는 상황 나올 때 아, 어떤 어떤 그 입구에 역장 쳐졌잖아요. <웃음> 아, 네. 그 맨날 그거에 당하면 진짜 짜증나거든요. 네. 아, Whenever Protoss uses force field, Zerg, it can be very frustrating for Zerg, for me especially. 다른 거에 만족을 해서 네. 좀 다행이었던 것 같아요. 네. 이렇게 돌아가긴 but 했지만 the, 어쨌든 the 이번 시즌도 승리감이 올라가게 됐어요. 일단 아, 16강은 이제 가는 건 쉽잖아요. Tonight, <웃음> But hey, you did it. You made it to 16. 네. 아, 조금 어렵네요. 그렇죠. 문제는 이제 8강인데 yeah, 그동안 11번의 포대스를 진출했지만 7번씩이나 또 16강에 갔어요. 그렇지만 so 8강은 한 번도 올라가지 못했거든요. But you've 네. never made it to the round of eight. 
Oh. That's crazy. I didn't realize that. Will he be able to make it to the quarterfinals this season? Honestly, I don't try to think about it. Oh, but I saw him in the last interview today. He says his first goal is just to win in group nominations. If you're falling down, you'll have to win. Dark, I saw in your opening interview, you... You said if you were eliminated in the round of 16 this season, you're going to come back playing as random next season. Ah, that's right? <laughs> yes, or no? Mm, yeah, maybe that'll be much better. I think sometimes ah, I just put too much pressure on myself, to be honest. If I feel the pressure, 하겠습니다. it doesn't lead to better performance. Uh, <laughs> <약간은 마음이세요. laughs> <laughs> 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 you think you're doing, she says, you think you're doing better she overall. She's like herself. So the GSL versus the World is coming up. You're one of the Zerg nominees. And we've only got a few more hours. Do you have anything you want to say to people? Make them vote for you. He says they know what to do. I don't want to beg. They know what to do. I've got the mindset that I'm already in the tournament, to be honest. So I'll just wait and see the results. That's kind of funny. I like that. I bet he will, too. I'm going to start. So before we close out the interview, any words to your fans? Thanks for supporting me throughout my career. I know that sometimes I have some bumpy performance, especially today in the round of 32, but I promise next time. I'm going to be trying to finish it out in the winner's match next time. Gary says, congratulations. Good job, Jadar. Um, games are good today, but I guess we got the results you sort of expect to see. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I guess the trap 2-1 over Dark, that was probably the best series of the night. And the one thing that was kind of an upset a little bit. And at the end of the day, Dark does bring it back against Trap with that 2-0. So, I mean, the, the round of 16 is just looking more and more and more stacked. Really, the only big surprise would be Maru not making it through so far, right? Everyone else were kind of like, yeah, yeah, you should We got you Hurricane right as well. Kind yeah, of like, that's true. That's yeah. funny. But, you know, he's not a bad player. No. Uh, right. It'll be more interesting if Hurricane makes it to the round of eight. We'll have to see, though. We're getting closer and closer to the end of the round of 32. Tomorrow, join us. Same time, same place. We have classic Time, Deer, and Bunny. Time, our Chinese player. Yeah, it's been a very long time since we have a Chinese player in the code S. Can't wait to see how he does. A very young Terran. Uh, doing a great job during those qualifiers. So definitely tune in tomorrow, guys. Do not forget. I this do, is a wild week of round of 32. I do think this is another group where we have two players we expect to move on. Classic and Deer. Yep. Let's see if Time can cause an upset. We have yet to have a non-Korean move on to the round of 16. Maybe Time can do it. Yeah, only two left. He and Special, aka Major, are the last two remaining in the last two groups. So I, I got my fingers crossed one of them can make it in that round of 16. Uh, and we also have, uh, as usual, the GSL on Saturday, but we have a bunch of days crammed together for this week before we have a little bit of time off. By the way, the GSL versus the world is coming up. Mid, uh, join us starting on Thursday. We're going to go all the way to Sunday. And if you want to join us live on Sunday, it's not at the studio like our normal matches are. This is going to be a Kyungi University grand, what is that, Peace Place? Is it Palace? Or? Peace Place. Peace Place. Oh, it's actually supposed to be Peace Palace. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I read it wrong because I'm like, Peace Place? What is that? It's a place of peace. Yeah. Well, and I think that's going to be one of the most special things we've done in StarCraft 2 in a long time. Yeah. Get out there and vote for the players you want to see. It's Your like vote the matters. It's all-star match right there. Yeah. And Maybe we'll have an upset, man. Maybe. I can't wait to see who, who actually wins the polls and who's coming. Yeah, me I too. guess tomorrow we should probably know, right? Think Dark's going to win that poll? Yeah. I think so. I think so. Or what other Zerg would... Is Sue's already in, so... Yeah. It's like Dark is more well, popular it's not, than... It's not going to be Losira, I don't think. <laughs> I think you might be right. Yeah. yeah. Even Viol, I'm like, oh, I think that people just like Dark. You know, so, these are the players that you can vote for. Get over there and cast your oh, vote. Oh, it could be Solar, though. I bet you it's between Solar yeah, and Dark. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm looking forward to coming down tomorrow. Yeah, well, it's going to be great games. I'm just looking over all these names. Like, yeah, me I too. Want I'm to reading through. Oh. Put some thought to that, guys. Vote for the worthy players. We're going to have an awesome show match.
be really cool to see who actually ends up winning that. But uh, guys, it's in your hands, so make sure that you vote because the, the right voting thing. is ending in like what four hours? Yeah, should be four. Five hours maybe. Four, four and a half. Not hours. six hours. Not six no. hours. <laughs> um, damn. Too bad. No regret. Didn't do better today, but he's got another shot. Yeah. There's always an XGS. And don't, don't forget, with this style that he's playing, he's either going to look genius or it's going to look bad. And he didn't win, so it's just like, oh, they stopped all your cheese. You must be bad. No, he's a really great player. He's ranked yeah. very high on the Korean server. He's made into the Code S. Uh, just did not pan out his way tonight. That is going to do it for our show tonight here at the GSL Codas. We will be back tomorrow. I know we're not usually back tomorrow, but we are this time. So join us. We love you. Have a good morning, afternoon, or night, wherever you are.